So hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and it is time to choose my top 10 books of 2017. Now I love filming these videos every year, I get so excited about choosing the best books I read in 2017. 2017's been a great year for books. It's not been a great year for my reading as I've not read that many books so even choosing 10 was like oh I've not really read a lot this year but that is something I'm going to change in 2018. So let's get on and let me talk to you about the books I absolutely adored in 2017. The first book was one of the first that I read at the start of the year. It is The Incomparable The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now I did a completely separate review on this. I'll leave that down below as well as any other kind of reviews that I did based on the books that I talk about. So if you do wanna know more about these books, I might have a whole entire review down in the description box. What can I say about this book, guys? This has taken 2017 by storm. This has been on the bestseller list all year because it's a book that ultimately deserves it. This is about a black girl called Star. She lives in a predominantly black neighborhood and she goes to a predominantly white school. And then when her best friend, Khalil, get shot by a policeman for doing nothing. This kind of kicks off the entire book and it's a book all about racial prejudice. It's kind of centered around the Black Lives Matter movement and it is about Star who is an absolutely incredible heroine who will make you laugh, she'll make you cry and ultimately this book broke my heart but also it has really light moments in it, it has really funny moments and I adored Star as a character and all of the characters in this were beautifully written, really well rounded. This is a book that you need to read and I urge you to read it if you haven't yet. Now the movie of this is hopefully coming out next year or the year after and it's got Amanda Stenberg in it and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait for this to be made into a movie and of course this had to make an appearance in my top 10 books of 2017. Now there isn't an order for any of these books that I mention. If there was an order this would be kind of at the top. Now my second book isn't YA, it's an adult book called The Light We Lost by Jill Santapolo. This is actually a book that I worked on at HarperCollins, so I did the publicity for this book in the UK and it is a book that ultimately blew me away, that I fell in love with, I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's a novel that kicks off on 9-11 when two students who go to Columbia University watch planes hit the two towers and that is when their lives are drawn together. This is ultimately a love story set in New York and it's told in vignettes, in really short paragraphs almost, like each one of those is a chapter. But the way this is written is that it's written in second person, so it's addressing somebody. Told from the female point of view, who's called Lucy, so of course I'd love it. But this is a completely magical story. It is romantic, it is breathtaking, it is moving and I might have shed millions of tears on this book. So please read this. If you're looking for the next one day, this book is it. You will not be disappointed and I just want you guys, if you take anything away from this video, you might not have heard of this book, but trust me when I say you need to read this. And that's me being completely unbiased by the way. I read this and absolutely fell in love with it and I was so lucky to work on this this year. So please do check it out. Now the next book on my top 10 list, of course needs to be A Court of Wings and Ruin. Guys, I have an entire video dedicated to this book. It is a long video, so if you haven't watched it yet, I'll leave it down below. You can get yourself a cup of tea and stay in for the long haul and watch that video. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this. This is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas, who is my queen. I love her. And this is kind of the series wrap up I'm not going to say conclusion because there are more books coming in the series, but this is the conclusion to two characters in this book's story arc. So we follow Feyre and Reese in this book and this wraps up their story. This book kept me up at night. It completely destroyed me. I was racing through the pages, I couldn't put it down. And it's no surprise, but I think this might have to be my favourite book of 2017 because I'm complete Sarah J Maas trash. I love her and anything that she writes. But this in particular was just like a warm hug in a book. It made me feel all the feels and it was just incredible. So yeah, what can I say? I'm so predictable. Now next is a book that you might not have heard of either. So it is another adult book and I've been really, really good at reading not just YA this year. I think that's the one thing to be proud of actually. I didn't read loads of books this year, but the ones I did read were completely different and very diverse. I read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Now this is a proof copy, so the finished copy is out there. It's already out in the world. 
this book guys completely blew me away. I didn't know what to expect by this. I thought it'd be kind of like a romance book I guess. I don't know why but that's what I thought it would be going in. I did not expect to be completely changed by this book. This is a book about loneliness. It's a book about trauma and it's told in a completely unique, funny, compelling way. It is the most unusual book I've read in a while but I think it's also one of the most surprising and special books I've also read in a while. So let me just read you the back of this book. So it says, I have always taken great pride in managing my life alone. I'm a sole survivor. I'm Elna Oliphant. I don't need anyone else. There's no big hole in my life, no missing part of my own particular puzzle. I'm a self-contained entity. That's what I've always told myself at any rate. And it's about a girl who completely ostracised herself from everyone. You know, she finishes work for the week, she buys two bottles of vodka from the shop, she goes home, she drinks them all that weekend, she doesn't leave the house. And yet, it's a novel about obsession, it's a novel about finding out who you are, and the twist in this novel completely destroyed me. I mean, I didn't see it coming, it broke me. Please do read this, it's breathtaking, and everyone I know who's read this book has loved it, so that should tell you something. And I'll leave a link down below where you can check it out. Now the next book is a book that, again, I had really low expectations for. I mean, that seems to be a common theme here. It was The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. This is YA sci-fi. I don't usually read YA sci-fi, so this was initially like, Oh, okay, we'll just see how this goes. This book, guys, oh my god, it's just so addictive. I flew through this, I just completely absorbed it and adored it. And this, I must say, was one of the most surprising books that I've read in terms of like having really low expectations, but then coming out and being like, well, that was amazing. So this is about a kind of robot, I guess, called Nemesis. Her main goal is to protect her human counterpart and all she's built for is to protect her. Then she gets sucked into this massive plot and it features betrayal, it features romance, it features epic strong female characters and ultimately The Diabolic was an incredible read and now I want to read more YA sci-fi. Now the next book was something that I stumbled upon by chance. I was browsing Goodreads and I think I was like looking at Outlander on Goodreads and I was like I really want to read a book like Outlander that isn't Outlander. And then I stumbled across this book called The Pride of Lions by Marsha Cannon. I hadn't heard about this book, I had no expectations, but the Goodreads reviews were like amazing. So instantly I downloaded this book on my Kindle, I started reading it. Guys, I was blown away. So this is romance set in Scotland and it's set during the Jacobite Rebellion, the same as Outlander. It kind of follows the same timeline as Outlander. So if you're aware of Diana Gabaldon's Outlander series, you will naturally like this. So this is about a girl called Catherine and she is quite a spoilt rich girl. She set her sights on marrying the kind of local heartthrob. And then when this gentleman shows up, this kind of roguish character, he kisses her and basically compromises her, which means that she is forced to marry him. And he turns out to have quite strong connections to the Scottish Jacobite rebellion. It's full of romance, it's full of like angsty scenes, and it's full of like action and fighting and everything that Outlander delivers on. But it's just like equally as compelling. Catherine is an amazing heroine and the love interest guys let me just tell you, you will not regret reading this book. If you like romance, if you like Outlander, you're gonna love this book. Now, next up, we have King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard, who is one of my favorite writers out there. And King's Cage is the third book in the Red Queen series, and it did not disappoint in terms of taking the series to another level. So I'm not gonna talk to you too much in depth about this book because it's the third in the series, there's lots that's already happened before this, so really to understand it you'll need to read the first two books, which are Red Queen and Glass Sword. But basically this is a world divided by blood, you're either red-blooded and you're the kind of scourge of society, you're in the lower classes, or you're silver blood and you're the elite. You have powers if you're silver blooded. But our main character, Mare, defies all those rules and she is a red who has the powers of a silver. So there's something not right about that. She lands herself in a whole lot of trouble. There's romance, there's intrigue, there's betrayal. If there could be one word to describe the series, it is betrayal. Do not trust anyone, guys, because they'll betray you. This book was the perfect book in terms of delivering 
the action and the climax that we needed for this series. The next book, Warstorm, comes out next year in 2018. It is one of my most anticipated reads as it will round off the series. So do look out for my most anticipated 2018 reads and that will feature in that. But basically, if you've not read the Red Queen series yet, I really would recommend it. Now my eighth best book of the year, of course, was Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. I only finished this about a month ago because I chaired Sarah J Maas's event in Manchester and I took my sweet time reading this, as I'll explain in my Tower of Dawn review down below. This is a spin-off from the Throne of Glass world, focused on one character's journey during the Throne of Glass story arc. So it's hard to explain what this book's about if you've not read the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, but it's focused on one character called Kaol, who is my favourite character in the series. And this book gave me everything I wanted in life. Might be an over-exaggeration, but Kale is just such an incredible character. There's romance in this, there's plot twists, like holy plot twists, and action. And it just reminded me like how good Sarah is in terms of like world building and crafting a new world because we're introduced to a completely new world in this book. Now number nine is a really, really sweet short story collection that I've recently finished. It is Almost Midnight by Rainbow Rowell. It's the first book in a while that's really made me feel festive and it gave me those fluttery feelings in my chest because it's so romantic but also Rainbow Rowell is so good at giving you those fluttery feelings and making you feel cosy. This book is two short stories that are already out there. One of them is called Kindred Spirits. The other one is called Midnight and Midnight's actually featured in My True Love Gave To Me, the festive short story collection, which was edited by Stephanie Perkins. And Kindred Spirits was a World Book Day title here in the UK. I had read Midnight's before, but never Kindred Spirits. And both of these were just the most incredible short stories. And I read this in one sitting. Oh God, it's just like, if you're after some light-hearted like romance and festive cheer, I can't recommend this book enough. And finally, my final favourite book of 2017 was The Power by Naomi Alderman. It's a dystopian novel that focuses on our world, but what if women started developing a power that completely twisted the scales of things and made women come out on top? It is nothing like I've read before. It is unusual. It is somewhat addictive, even though it's equally as harrowing and shocking and the things that happen in this book it's uniquely told. So this is the blurb on the back. All over the world women are discovering they have the power. With a flick of the fingers they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly every man on the planet finds they've lost control. The day of the girls has arrived but where will it end? A lot of people are divided on this book whether they enjoyed it but I think there's one thing to say, like this will leave an impression on you and this will be one of the most unique books you've read this year. So undoubtedly this book had to be in my top 10 of this year. I read this on holiday and it was a poolside read and I was just flicking through the pages because I couldn't put it down. So it really is that good and I'd recommend this to all. Guys, those were my top 10 books of 2017. Thank you so much for making 2017 an amazing year and keep an eye out because my 2018 most anticipated reads is coming up too. But these were my favourite books of this year. Do let me know what your favourites were down in the comments, I would love to know. And if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos in 2018. I can't wait to show you guys what I've got planned in 2018 and I'll speak to you soon. Bye guys!